In this video, we're going to look at the various ways chemists can make their processes more sustainable. Now, this, this branch of chemistry is referred to as green chemistry, and the green part obviously refers to the fact that um, these changes are better for the environment. And the word sustainability, well, the word sustain, if you think about in music terms, sustain means to hold onto a note as long as possible. So sustainability in this context means making resources last as long as possible, um, which ultimately will benefit the environment. So one way to make a process more sustainable or greener is to try and develop it so that it uses fewer hazardous chemicals. Now obviously hazardous chemicals need very careful treatment. Um, if they got into the atmosphere or into the environment then they would cause problems and obviously that's not very sustainable. The second method we're looking at is to develop processes which would ultimately have 100% atom economy. So if we look at this reaction here, A plus B makes C plus D, let's suppose that it was substance C that we wanted to make, this was our useful product, you can see that this reaction here produces another substance D. Now this is a waste product and so waste products they can't just be disposed of any old how, you've got to treat them um, any treatment process involves energy, so you're using fossil fuels. Um, other things you could bring in are treatment processes require often other chemicals involved. Those chemicals need to be made, so you're using energy to make the chemicals to treat this waste. Um, you're using energy to make the chemicals to treat this chemical, and so on. So this waste product is... Um, making the process not very sustainable. So if you can develop another process to make C, so let's make up some uh, letters, so E plus F makes C. You can see there that the only product in this second process is product C, the one that you want. So in other words, all of the atoms in the reactants make the product. And so there's no waste at all in that, and this one would have this 100% atom economy. So that is obviously preferred because there's no waste. Another way scientists can make their processes more sustainable is to try and use renewable energy. So instead of burning fossil fuels to create the heat required for the pressure, required for the reaction, then they would use renewable energy sources to generate those conditions. Now obviously you're not burning fossil fuels and so there's less CO2 going into the atmosphere and again you're not using up a finite resource. Fossil fuels will ultimately run out so you are making them last longer so they are being sustained. Scientists could also recycle more substances so rather than disposing of things can you find an alternative use for something so if we go back to this process here that didn't have 100% atom economy if you can find a use for this substance D then you are making the process more sustainable it might be that a neighboring factory process might use D as one of its reactants and so you could trade your waste product to the other process and that would actually give you 100% atom economy then because you are finding a use for D. It's not being treated as a waste. And another way could be to reduce waste. So I've drawn up two processes here. So we have process one, which I've underlined C, that's what we want to make, that's our useful product. So process one makes C, but it makes two waste products. 
um, substance, sorry, process two, make C and one waste product. And so if you can develop processes that make the same product but have less waste product, that is a way to make your process more sustainable. And the final way that we'll um, discuss is to develop a catalyst for the process. So obviously catalysts lower the activation energy by providing the alternative route for the reaction. So lower energy is obviously more sustainable because you're not burning as much fossil fuel to create the conditions required for the reaction. So that's an obvious advantage of the catalyst. The other thing to mention about catalysts, and we'll use these two reactions again, catalysts can enable different reactions to take place. So if we treat the first one here as the uncatalyzed reaction, and then if a catalyst is developed and allows this process to take place, still to make the same product, you can see that this second process, so we're calling this the catalyzed process now, actually has a better atom economy, a higher atom economy than this process because there's less waste and obviously that is more sustainable. We're now going to focus on one particular substance and look at ways in which carbon dioxide has gone from being a bit of a villain to a hero. So everybody treats carbon dioxide as a, a real bad substance and you know rightly so because it's a greenhouse gas and causes all kinds of problems with the earth's climate and so on but it's actually been put to very good use now and it's taking some very very bad chemicals out of circulation so it is a bit of a hero as well so the first example of carbon dioxide being um, a bit of a hero is the fact that it's replaced CFCs as what's referred to as a blowing agent for polymers. So I've got one of these foam polymers here, these squashy packaging polymers, and in the past these were blown up, inflated, with CFCs to give them their squashiness. Okay, now obviously CFCs have been banned now and to make these polymers squashy now they are inflated or blown with CO2. Now CO2 is far less damaging than CFCs. The other way in which carbon dioxide has been put to good use is as a solvent. So we're dealing with supercritical carbon dioxide. Now that's just carbon dioxide under certain um, temperature and pressure where it becomes uh, liquid. And it's now used as the solvent in lots of different processes where it's replaced very harmful halogenoalkane solvents. Now there are lots of examples I could give you but I'm just going to give three. So supercritical CO2 or liquid CO2 is now used as the solvent in decaffeination so in the extraction of caffeine uh, from tea and coffee to make decaffeinated tea and coffee the caffeine is extracted using supercritical CO2 instead of uh, halogenoalkane solvent such as CCL4 it's also now used in dry cleaning. Again, it's replaced halogenoalkane solvents. And it's also used in the brewing process to extract flavour from hops. Uh, again, it's replaced uh, dangerous halogenoalkane solvents.